All right, guys. Thank you all again for joining us today. Uh, today's April the 24th, a little bit after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we want to thank you all again for joining us with the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, today on our class or on our meeting, we have with us Mr. Bruce and Kenny. Uh, he's going to be doing a demonstration on uh, carving and painting uh, his gnomes. Uh, so we'll turn it over to him in just a few minutes. I'm just going to run through a few, uh, few orders of business here that uh, we're going to take care of today. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do in the meeting, we're going to be doing a live auction uh, in the chat uh, for this heavy uh, two inch rough out knife um, made by Rich and Holly Smithson. Um, they've donated this to go towards our uh, Zoom expenses. Um, so if you're interested in, in doing the auction for this, uh, go ahead and uh, start bidding in the chat. Uh, we'll allow the auction to go throughout the meeting. And whoever has the highest bid at the end of the meeting will win the knife. And uh, we'll get your information and get that sent out to you once payment is made. Uh, I think Tom, if I'm not correct, uh, let me know, but I think we're gonna take payment by PayPal. Um, and if the person that wins it can't do PayPal, then we'll work out the details after the meeting. So just stay after if, uh, if you're interested. And it looks as though we already have one bid in the, uh, in the chat. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. If you're interested in winning the knife, go ahead and start bidding on that. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do is uh, Yaron, uh, who's over the uh, Wood Carving Academy uh, website where we're doing uh, classes and things there. Uh, he's been gener generous enough to donate a one month subscription to Wood Carving Academy. Um, so at the end of the meeting, we're gonna do a drawing for that one month subscription. Again, all of the classes uh, that's being held uh, now, a lot of those will have uh, videos and recordings out there that you can go back and watch uh, with that subscription. And then there's older classes that's on there as well. So uh, make sure you get a Wood Carving Academy and check out their website. Uh, I think you can sign up there for uh, a month subscription, three months, maybe six months in a year. Um, check out their website, see what they have available and uh, sign up for those if you're interested in uh, learning, taking classes uh, during this time that uh, you know classes and clubs still aren't getting together. Uh, on a full-time basis. So um, I've been through a few things as far as uh, things that are going on through Wood Carving Academy, the workshops that they have available there. Uh, Mr. Dave Stetson started a class today on the seated man. Uh, so that class is probably closed. Um, Dwayne Gosnell and du uh, Del Green has a class that's been going on and Janet Cordell I think has a class that started today. Uh, those are the April work workshops that uh, were scheduled that starts this month. Uh, starting in May, Kevin Applegate's going to have a Captain Chum Bucket pirate class. Uh, Bob Hershey's going to be on uh, doing a Fearless Freddy surfing frog class. And Janet Cordell is also going to do a Sky Dog class. So check those out on Wood Carving Academy. Uh, you can reach out to them if you are interested in signing up for their classes, and they'll be happy to uh, get you signed up. Uh, then in June, Ryan Olson's going to be doing a class on carving miniatures. I think we're going to be doing some design work in those classes and uh, design your own miniatures and then carving through some of the ones that uh, that he's done. So uh, contact Ryan if you're interested in that, as well as uh, Del Green's going to be doing a uh, cowboy roper uh, class that's going to be starting in June. Uh, so if you're interested in that, contact Del Green. He'll be happy to sign you up. Uh, keep in mind, Chris Hammock's doing some classes. If you're interested in his classes, reach out to Chris. Uh, Dwayne Gosnell's doing a Whittling Wednesday class every other Wednesday. Uh, those classes are listed on his website, so make sure you go out and check out Dwayne's website if you're interested in those. Um, I'll talk about some of the upcoming meetings that we have uh, in the coming weeks at the end of the meeting. Uh, just wanted to remind you all, if you want to watch past meetings, go out on YouTube, check out our YouTube page, like and subscribe there, and uh, you can go back and watch the past 51 meetings that we've had so far. And again, this is our first meeting for our second year, uh, so thank you all again for the support and for joining us on here today. Uh, Having said all that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Bruce. Uh, Bruce, we appreciate you taking time out to meet with us today and uh, show us some of your skills. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing what you have to share with us today, Bruce. All right, well, thank you. I'd like to thank Tom and Blake for, for doing this kind of thing. <clears throat> Blake has been murdering my last name ever since he started uh, pushing this thing. So it's Ankeny, <laughs> not Ann Kenny. <laughs> Not too bad though, Blake. My apologies. We're okay with that. <laughs> so, I don't know, they said just to talk about my carving journey. Um, I started carving in 1982. 
went to a local event that our um, uh, school had going on. On the corner was a bunch of gentlemen from Blue Earth that were had started a little wood carving club. And uh, I walked up there and I looked at some of that stuff and I thought, man, I got to try this. So uh, that that got me hooked on carving. Um, over the years, I've taken a lot of classes with a lot of people. Harley Schmidtgen was very uh, instrumental in getting me involved with carving. Harley was from Blue Earth and, and uh, uh, was the founding member, I'm sure, of the Blue Earth Royal Chislers Wood Carving Club. Um, and he would get some pretty good, uh, pretty good instructors to come to Blue Earth to, um, that we were able to take class. I was able to take a class with Harold Enlow uh, early on. My claim to fame on that one was the first thing I did was cut my leg, uh, holding the carving in my lap and I sliced my pants and my leg open. Uh, so I'm sure I really impressed Harold. Um, let's see, uh, also uh, Phil and Vicki Bishop, they're here. We used to have the Upper Midwest Wood Carving um, Show uh, that went on for, and Harley, I think you're on somewhere. <clears throat> you can probably tell me when that started. I can't remember for sure, but it was into, uh, oh, almost 30 years of having that wood carving show here. And, um, so I was able to take a class with Phil and Vicki Bishop. Uh, David Sable was here and I took a class with him. And I was also fortunate that I live uh, only an hour and 20 minutes away from Faribault, Minnesota. So I've taken classes uh, with Marv Kaiser set and he even joined our wood carving club. So he would come over every month and, and uh, got to know Marv real well. Uh, so thank you for, for that. And that gave me a good, uh, good start at uh, wanting to become a carver. So uh, let's see, I don't know. I started out by carving, Harley had me carving uh, cowboy busts, I believe was some of the first things that I did. Um, then I got into thinking that I wanted to do more caricature stuff. Um, Harley got me doing Santa Clauses. He and I went <laughs> together and bought rough outs and uh, started carving masses of Santa Clauses back in, uh, Oh, probably the mid 80s, 84, 85 in there somewhere. Uh, so we got into doing that a lot. And I kind of got burned out of doing Santa Clauses. I still do a few, but not as many as I used to. <laughs> so I don't know what else you want to know about, about Bruce and Blue Earth. Am I still on here? Can anybody hear me? <laughs> You're good, Bruce. Um, if you want to go ahead and get into your demonstration, that'd be good. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Um, I started carving these gnomes and I've carved a lot of them. I've got, I don't know, a dozen of them sitting over here. Um, but this is basically the blank that I start out with. Am I in a good spot there, guys? Oops. You're right up a little bit. Oops, move this this way. Nope, I'm missing it. Yeah, <laughs> we had it, this all set up, I thought. <laughs> take, take it more towards your tools there on your desk. Okay. All right. Maybe there. there that looks okay, good. Okay, that's good. Well, I'll just start chopping away at this thing. First thing I do is just cut the cut the edges off um, so that when you're holding it, it isn't cut in your hand. And feel free to ask questions. I guess I'm not. My wife wouldn't agree that I wasn't much of a talker, but but I I don't. Uh, I usually am listening to music really loud while I'm carving, so I'm not mu that much of a conversationalist when it comes to that. What size block are you using, Bruce? This is about two and a quarter, um, two and a quarter by two and a quarter and six inches tall. And if anybody you know wants the wants me to email them the pattern, I can certainly do that. Um, I 
Hey, Bruce, if it's possible, um, you can send the pattern to either me or Tom, and we'll pay, post it out on the internet, and that way people can just go out there and pull it off. Oh, sure, yep, that, I, I can certainly that. do that. Oh, look at there, there's the fun part about Minnesota, but sometimes you get a, you get a little spot in there, but that's all right. And I've got some of these done in different stages so that you don't have to watch me carve this whole thing. But basically I get, I get it to about that point. And then I draw on where his, uh, where his hat's gonna be. And I put these earmuffs coming down on the side. And, and if you want to, of course you can carve uh, ears on there if you'd rather have something like that. Does that look as blurry to everybody as it does to me or is that okay? Yes, it is blurry. Okay. Do I, if I, if and I think he has to hold it more to the center. That's good. A little bit, that's better. Okay. We'll, we'll see whether that spot works. Yeah. All right. And then with, with the, with the, where the top of the hat's going to be there, we just carve around. And with just, just a big, I don't know, this. This is by a spy V tool. I'm never sure what size they are. Bruce, it's Daniel. How do you like your uh, your main roughing out knife? Oh, I love it. This uh, it's it the comes from Northwood Ventures. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. I, I do they call that a sloyd? Is that what that is? It's got a curve so. on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it. I mean, it moves a, it moves a lot of wood, and I can turn it easy, you know, on the on the curves. So yeah, I I really enjoy that one. Thanks very much, Bruce. Is this your uh, own pad? Did you come up with your own uh, design on this gnome? Um, you know, all these gnomes kind of start to look the same. The only thing that I did a little bit different um, was probably these ear flaps that I put on here instead of uh, instead of having um, ears showing. Mm. But I, I guess I don't I don't know whether I can take credit for the exact whole look of it. I mean, like I say, these gnomes all kind of look the same. Well, you give it great expression. I love when you, you, you know, they're looking at each other, they're looking away, they're giving each other dirty looks. I, I love it. Well, that makes people, when they're going to buy them, they want to buy at least one or they want to buy at least two of them so that they're looking at each other. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, they look better in a group sometimes than they do by themselves. All right, well, there's, you know, that's kind of one that's magically already got like the arms put in. Because I think mostly, I think somebody, I mean, you're probably gonna wanna see not so much the, the general carving of all of this. I think you might benefit more by seeing how I do the face and, and the beard and that kind of stuff, unless, unless somebody wants me to carve more. You guys tell me what you want me to do. Is All right, so if I'm gonna put- Bill, adjust the camera to make it a little bit more uh, clear. It's still blurry. bigger. It's still blurry. 
Um, it might help if you carve over your workbench so the camera's not trying to figure out what to focus on the workbench, your legs, or the carving. Yeah, might help. Okay. Thanks. Is that, a little, is that a little better spot right there? That's a little bit better, but it's still kind of blurry for me. I don't know about everybody else. Whoops. Yeah, I should have. I've heard some people, they put an X on here so they know where to put it. <laughs> it could be a little bit of his connection too. That sometimes causes a little bit of blurriness. Oh, yeah, the internet connection? Yes, sir. Well, come on. Guys, I thought we had this figured out better than that, huh? <laughs> All right, I just carve a carve start by carving just an eyebrow or a brow across the top. And then I come down here where his cheeks and of his nose are going to be. Say, Bruce. Yeah. This beaner. Is that the Hi, famous, Roger? Hey, is that the famous Momax knife? That is <laughs> the famous Momax. <laughs> Handmade by Marv Kaiser set. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. <laughs> yeah. Now you've done a couple of these, Roger. Yep, I do. They are I've been seeing fantastic. them. Yeah. I have been seeing them on Facebook, so I would call that knife chubby. A chubby? Yeah, chubby. He's a cute little knife. Yeah, I like I like to be able to hold my hand. It's just easier. Just I don't know. It just feels better in my hand that way than than some of them that. Oh, see, this is another Momax here, but it's in a bigger handle. And the Momax has got to do with. Uh, it's a Cleveland steel cutoff blade is, is what it is. It's made out of and uh, really, really hard. It holds an edge real good. And Marv Kaiser set made me promise I would never sharpen this on a, on a wheel. I have to do it. I have to strop it. So, and I've lived up to my promise on that one for him. So <laughs> do you have BBs in the handle? No, I do not. Now what? Now what? I've heard that before. What's that all about? And the few. This is Doug Evans. The few times I've seen Marv, the the knife he used to carry around with him everywhere, he actually drilled out the fanny end of the handle and loaded it up with BBs because he wanted a heavier feel. Oh, really? Okay. I guess he never revealed that to me. <laughs> All right, now can, can we see that pretty halfway decent? Yep. If I hold it, half is blurry to me. Yeah, I think it's the internet connection, Bruce. I'm not sure there's much we can do about that. All right, well then from, from this point, maybe I'm better if I get over. From this point, I'm just going to figure out how wide the nose is going to be. And I just make a, a cut on each side for the edges of the nostrils.
All right, so there's basically, God, that is too bad that that is so blurry. Hey, Tom, try to switch it back to uh, Bruce's face and see if it's his internet connection or if it's his phone. That's clear. It's clear there. That's clear. I think it's the lighting. You know, I think it's a light too. The light's right on it. Well, I only got I got one more light I can shut off here. Yeah, the only other thing would be to go shut the sun off outside. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> do you have anything black that you put on your workbench that might bring it out a little bit better? Just on here? Yeah. Black, dark blue, or dark green. Yeah, I don't get it. There's just like there's a there's a blurry a blurry spot in there. Because the, the picture of your face and everything is really clear. Yeah, I don't know whether I could, whether I could, I probably couldn't stand up here and. <laughs> car right at this, right on the other camera there. I can at least show it a little bit if you switch yeah. to the other, the other yeah. camera. Yeah, that's clear. Bruce, you can yeah. spit on it and rub it on your t-shirt. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> just, rub, just the rub, rub the camera rub rub the camera lens and rub it on your t-shirt. You're trying to make a fool out of me, <laughs> I'm not sure that made any difference. <laughs> mm. ah. Well, that's too bad. Hey, Bruce, I'm wondering if you can't reboot your phone or not reboot it, but just go out of Zoom on your phone and go back into it and see if it connects better when it comes back in. Uh, okay. While you're doing that, I'll run through uh, the meetings that we have coming up and just talk about a few things. You want to try that? Sure. Um, so we apologize for the technical difficulties. We, uh, we try to work through these during these meetings, but of course, as you all know, we're kind of doing it on the fly and what happens happens. Uh, none of this is scripted, so we appreciate your patience as we're working through this. Um, want to tell you a bit about what we have coming up. Um, next weekend, uh, May the 1st, we're going to have our first chainsaw carver on. His name's Jeff May. Um, you can check him out on Instagram. Uh, he actually has a, a pretty cool setup where he's going to be able to do a live demo uh, of a chainsaw carving without all the background noise. So we're going to try to work through uh, doing a demonstration with him and him talk through what he's doing while doing the chainsaw carving without having a lot of the noise. So that should be interesting. Um, Charles Banks is coming on May 8th. Uh, he's going to be doing flat plane carving. Um, and I think he's planning on doing a live demo also. So uh, make sure you join us for that. And then on May the 15th, we have Tom Matus that's going to be coming on. Uh, he's a duck decoy carver. And um, he's going to come on and talk about duck decoy carving. I think he's uh, an award-winning duck decoy carver. So 
and I should be interesting meeting them that day. Um, one to let you all know, if you haven't been looking in the chat right now, the uh, the knife auction that we're doing is up to two hundred thirty dollars. Again, it's the knife, it's the sheath, um, it's a freestyle handle. I'll show you that again if you're interested in that. Uh, as you all know, Helvies are kind of hard to come by right now. Rich and Holly works as hard as they can to try to make as many knives as they can, uh, and they uh, they have quite the demand for the knife. So uh, this would be a good knife to have. Uh, Fitching your hand well, if you're interested in that, make sure you go over in the uh, in the chat there and put in your auction bid. Again, we'll run that till the end of the meeting. So um, we appreciate you all participating in that. And again, the bid's at $230. Um, we're waiting on Bruce now to see if we can get rebooted back. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, doing the Buy Me A Coffee uh, fundraiser that we have, uh, have ongoing, I guess. Uh, that helps us pay for this Zoom meeting subscription that we have. Um, several months back, we had to bump up to the next level of subscription because we exceeded 100 people in our meetings. Uh, if you're interested in that, I put the uh, the link over in the chat. Uh, also, if you go to our YouTube page, you can go out and click on buy me a coffee and donate to the subscription. Again, we plan on having these meetings as long as we can. So uh, uh, if you want to contribute to that, go ahead and do so. Uh, we thank everybody who has contributed so far. Uh, we appreciate the support and uh, again, Hopefully these are beneficial for all the carvers and everybody that's participating. Um, you can see past meetings on uh, YouTube. Uh, we also have an Instagram page and uh, Facebook page. So that's where you can find out about uh, things that are coming up. Uh, so we appreciate the support. Make sure you go out on YouTube and like and subscribe there. Um, Bruce, are we still working through the issues there? Oh, well, it's, it's not letting me rejoin the meeting because I got kicked off by the admin. Okay, Tom should be able to let you back in once you... <laughs> Okay. I think you're going to have to close the app, Bruce. Close the app and reopen it. Okay. Hey, Blake, this is Dean Irving. Um, in case people haven't heard, um, Dwayne Gosnell's father-in-law passed away very unexpectedly this morning oh, no. at their family reunion. And so his class, he put out an email, but his class on Zoom this afternoon uh, won't be held and he'll get back in touch with everybody. I hate to hear that. Yeah. So keep him in your thoughts and prayers, folks. Uh, he was at a family reunion. And so he has to uh, go get his wife and deal with that. Okay. So Dwayne's class will be canceled and he'll notify the people that are uh, attending as far as when that will take place in the future. I'm sure he'll get that line back up. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to let you all know, Chip Chats that we had on a few weeks ago, uh, they actually have their website up and running. Uh, so if you want to go to chipchats.com, if you're interested in signing up there, uh, you can sign up now on their website uh, and pay the subscription stuff there. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. I think they're, again, working on trying to uh, trying to improve their, uh, their process and come up with some new ways to, uh, to share carving with everybody. So uh, try to support them if you can and go out and check out Chip Chats. Again, chipping away the sign that's behind me. Uh, they've donated a lot of money um, to these giveaways and things that we've done. We gave away uh, two $100 gift certificates last weekend. And uh, make sure you go out and patronize them. Make sure that uh, you buy uh, supplies and stuff from them, if at all possible. Uh, they've been a big support to this group. So uh, check out Chipping Away. Um, we'll uh, give Bruce just a few more minutes here. <laughs> this out. Well, you can at least Thank put my face back on here and see me struggling with my phone trying to get it to come back on again. <laughs> Maybe we should use your iPad, Bruce. Maybe we can put your iPad on there. About chipping away. Yes. Uh, because, because they're in Ontario, they're locked down and can't have customers in, but they are doing all their online stuff. Yeah, and again, they, they've been a big support. Um, we talk to them on a regular basis. Uh, so make sure you go out and check out their website and buy from them. We want to help all of the small businesses that are helping uh, wood carvers and uh, chipping away is just one of those. Uh, there's a lot of other um, companies out there that provide tools and uh, wood and things. Make sure you're going out and, and purchasing your items from uh, some of these businesses and help them during this time. I say, Blake, did you say uh, chipchats.com? Um, I Hey, Blake, it's Scott Bill. Uh, it's chipchats.org. Uh, <laughs> the other one's 
the other uh, link is bad. Okay, so Jesse, chip chat. Right. The other bad dot com is bad. You're right. Yeah. Now, can you rotate your iPad there, Bruce? All right. Now I, I, I took it off my iPhone and I've just got the iPad. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, there we go. So now I can't really, I can't see, but, but if you can. Um, Mitch Slayer. Up a little higher. Right there. So now, where is it? Move towards your knife there more. And, and your phone. You'll need to take your knife or your carving towards your knife there. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So right there is it pretty decent? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, man, we still got. My so lovely Jeff, wife is here trying recap. to help me too. Give us a recap, Bruce, as far as what you've done so far. Okay, well, we started out, you know, just with uh, just with the cutout blank, and then I just chopped off the corners, shaped in where the hat is, <clears throat> and then I put that one aside and picked one up that I already had partway done here. So then I started doing the face. And it's all, you know, pretty simple. I know, um, Bruce Carver's every 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 little thing that you learn how to do um, is it turns into being your own thing. You know, you can try to emulate other carvers, but you need to come up with what works the best for yourself and what you're the happiest with. I do a pretty simple eye. I don't. Uh, especially this is kind of designed to be a quick carve. So um, I don't put a ton of detail in, in like the eyes and all that kind of stuff. I'll use, I'll use just this cut that I make across the top as the top of the eye. I won't put an eyelid in it. And then I'll just come across here and just make a, make a swoop cut underneath there and cut in deep along the nose. And then you can just pop these corners out. Uh, Bruce? Yeah. If it would be possible, if you look at the draw, the one you have to your left and forward in your tablet, if you could move up into that area right there, you would really have, nope, nope, that's okay. That look, that's looking good. So if you'd move up into that area between the tablet and that, I think you'd, we might see things better. Right in there? Yeah, right in there, right about. Okay. Anybody All else right. see it better? Now maybe it would hurt to it would help to turn this light back on. Better or worse? <laughs> Try moving it to your left just a little bit more. Okay. Any questions on what I've done so far there? So and Bruce, then for the, uh, mostly with a knife or do you use gouges and other tools or I know you used a couple there when you were um, cutting in the hat and placing the arm. 
Yeah, I'll use uh, I'll use some some uh, like I'll use a V tool, and uh, I'll use some gouges um, in the smaller gouge when I get into doing the beard more. But I primarily carve with a with just a knife, um, unless I'm doing some great big stuff that I'll you know that I'll do on uh, when I put it in the clamp over here. Um, but yeah, I, I guess primarily I would say that I'm a, a, just a knife carver. And that's basically what I do for to get the beard laid in here. Just give him whatever kind of a smile you want to give him. Whoops. He's going to have a little bit narrower mustache there. <laughs> So Bruce, have you ever um, considered doing an article for like Wood Carving Illustrated? We'd love to see this gnome in there. Well, I I would not be opposed to doing that. I guess I I don't really know how to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't know how to how to get uh, get connected with them, but um, yeah, that would that would be something that would be. You wouldn't have to worry about my camera not working. <laughs> yeah, I know Blake had a lady from there on a few months ago and it seemed like she was really interested in receiving cool projects like this. So oh sure. Yeah, that would be uh that would be kind of fun to do. Okay, then I got a little bit sharper knife that I go in here and do the Oh, that's right, I unplugged this. I don't know that that'll go dead on me or not, but I think we're okay there. Um, a little bit sharper knife that I go in here to do the little finer cuts around the eyes. And then for the bag underneath the eye, I'll just go in here and make a little pop out cut there. Same on this side. Bruce, how many of these gnomes have you made that you can estimate? Uh, oh, probably, probably at least twenty. I got, I got a bunch of them here. <laughs> oh God, it's a family. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole a whole gazelle of them. And then you can Bruce. you can do different things like, you know, stick his hand out there when you're cutting the pattern out, make it big enough for a, a, either a bottle of beer or whatever. Um, I did one for my wife for Valentine's Day. This was kind of uh, I kind of swiped the idea from Sarah, a uh, baraclaw with the with the be mine the little candies, you know, so, but yeah, there's, I've done a bunch. There's one Bruce. holding a flower. Bruce. Yes. I'm very, the Solari wood carving, very happy to have mine. I'm, ah, you were, I'm halfway you were through it, so. You were supposed to uh, send me some pictures of yours that you got finished. I travel a lot, so the wood carving <laughs> Kind of been put on the the back burner for a while, so. Okay. I well, when you one that's halfway equal to you, then I'll send you a picture. So. Okay. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing stuff like that. I, I enjoy, I enjoy it when somebody likes what I did, and and uh, I like to see their renditions of them. You know, a lot of times they'll come up with something that's. That I'll go. Oh man, I should I should change mine and do that a little bit more like that. Bruce, right. Bruce yes. your, your painting is fabulous of these gnomes. I love what you've done. 
Well, thank oh, you. So awesome. I'm an oil painter and now I'm throwing whittler, so that's incredible. Well, when we get, how much longer we got to go, you guys? You're Does good. Go? You got lost time. We got another 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Sure. About? Yeah. Well, when I get down here where I got about 20 minutes left, I got I got a carving that's all done that will just, I'll just go through the painting procedure that I do. Um, I paint it really fast and I paint it wet. Um, so yeah, I'll, I would, I'd love to show you how I do that too. All right, I'm not obviously spending enough time on this thing for um, putting a lot of the detail in, but basically, basically that's the the shape that he is. And then I'll go over the whole beard just with whatever this is. A number, is that a six or a nine? <laughs> I think it's a nine, some kind of a gouge. And I'll just make, you know, the initial lines in the beard. Can you move to try to your phone there, Bruce? Pardon me? Move your carving a little closer to your phone. Yeah. There we go. I'm used to carving it right up next to my belly. I've always I've always heard that you have to have a big gut to be a wood carver because you can push it up against the table and the chips don't fall. So that's my excuse. <laughs> Hey, Bruce. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Bruce, this is Dave from Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask you, on, on average, how many hours a week do you think you spend carving? Oh, I still work full time, so I don't, I don't get to carve as much as I'd like to. Um, but I would imagine if I said I carved maybe six hours a week, I probably would, that would probably be pretty close. Thank unless you. I really get, unless I really get something going that I really am having a good time with, I'll sit out here a lot longer at night and carve. Hey Bruce, tell us a little bit about your uh, design process. You have the hippies and uh, some other things that you're known for, like the barbershop quartet. Uh, tell us the process you go through as far as designing and carving. Well, the the barbershop quartet that I did is I I took out a or got a picture of Norman Rockwell's barbershop quartet, and I tried to uh, I tried to copy that. Um, and it, it was, that was quite a few years ago that I tried that. My dad was a barbershop singer. Uh, so I, I wanted to do that to give to him. And uh, the worst thing is, is you can't ever find a picture of what Norman Rockwell stuff looks like from the back. You got to come up with that yourself. <laughs> so, so we came up with, uh, I don't know how, I don't know whether it's very easy to, I've got a lot of these carvings here. And whether they're going to show up on here or not. That's, that's my Norman Rockwell barbershop quartet. And I did that in 1995. Bruce, this is Roger Bean. Do you, yes, sir. Uh, I know you draw really well. And uh, do you, like, for the, the hippies, I know some of those are some self-portraits, but 
Um, <laughs> do, do you uh, draw and then uh, work some of them up in clay or a combination of the two? You know, I, I, I have done stuff in clay before. That's something that uh, uh, Mr. Kaiser set really, right. really, really pushes. And, and uh, I do um, sometimes, but most of the times I just kind of find a picture or something of, of uh, well, like a hippie. I'll, I'll, I'll just look through, look through the internet and find clothes and that kind of thing that I like and just try to emulate it. Um, the one hippie that I did, or actually the first one that I did was because I was, I've said that I like listening to music while I'm out here carving. And I was listening to an Alanis Morissette album or CD. And she has that song called, I got one hand in my pocket and the other's given a peace sign. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how I came up with the idea, um, for this guy. Yeah. So he's just just a dude with a one hand in a pocket and the other one's giving a peace sign. <laughs> but the other lines in the show or in the song are one hand in the pocket and the other one is flicking a cigarette. So I could probably <laughs> do that. But the play in the piano one, I think I'm going to have some trouble with. <laughs> well, 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 your uh, your commune is really uh, fantastic. They're, I really, <laughs> it's quite quite the scene. Well, thank you. That that's. Uh, that's one that I that I uh, spent quite a bit of time doing, and I really enjoyed that too. All right, so after I do my beard here, I like to take a knife and and just make some some slits up from the bottom, just to separate the the beard a little bit, make it look like it's not cut straight across there. I like to jagged it up a little bit. And then when I paint, you'll notice that um, after I get the beard painted white, like on this guy, I'll go along here with some black paint and I like, and it, and it kind of snakes up into the beard just to give it a little bit more interest. So that's why I put all these little cuts in the bottom here. So Bruce, I have a question. I have to leave, I have another commitment. Um, when you say you paint it wet, do you drip, dip it in um, linseed oil? Is that what you do? Before no, you I, I just got a big old spray bottle and I spray it. Oh, with water? I just spray it with water, yep. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. All right. So anyway, that's that's basic. This is, like I say, very rough. I, I'm not really uh, putting a lot of detail into it yet, um, which I'll do before I would paint that one, obviously, and do a lot of cleaning up around here. But that's kind of the basic. Um, if you want to, you know, you can, you know, put a slit down the middle of his coat here and and uh, uh, give him buttons if you want, or you know, just make it look like he's got a jacket on. Uh, eyebrows, you know, I'll go along with this same little gouge here and do this for the eyebrows. I don't get real deal detailed there either. When I, I'm when I'm going on these things and 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 the wood is good, you know, sometimes you're going to get a piece of wood that just doesn't work, and you should just throw a pile and have a fire with it later on, but I, a lot of times I'll keep going with it. But if you get a nice piece of wood and it's carving really good, I can I can start one of these from uh, from cutting the pattern out and uh, mm -hmm. painting mm -hmm. uh, in just a little bit less than two hours. So if a guy was gonna you know mass produce stuff, you could get it done pretty fast. So here's one that I got all done and ready to paint. Um, so if you if you'd like me to, I can kind of show you that process. Everybody good with that? Yep, that's great. <laughs> I'm still here. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, 
<laughs> Push all these guys out of the way. <laughs> Could you explain the benefit of the water? What does it do to make it better? Uh, I enjoy looking at a carving that is, uh, the paint is thin enough on it so you can see the wood grain. And I guess that's the reason I do it. Um, the very first, one of the very first carvings I did was this. And it's Clyde the camel. And I got that thing carved. Not real good, but, you know, I was, I was pretty happy with it. And I painted it. And uh, it looked like a piece of ceramic to me when it was done. And I, I just, it just made me sick. And I took it to uh, one of the, one of the, another founder of the wood carving club here in Blue Earth, Mr. Herb Hansen, and he would do anything to help you, help you uh, get into carving and and stick with it. And uh, I said, I'm just sick. I painted this thing, and it looks like a piece of ceramic. So he said, Well, give it here. You want that paint off of there? And I said, Yep. So he took it in his back room and he got a wire brush and I don't know what kind of solution he had. And he just scrubbed this thing and scrubbed all the paint off of it. And by the time he got done, it almost felt like hair. And I thought, yeah, I think I'll just leave that just like that. <laughs> so that was, that was the kind of thing that a good old Herb Hansen would do for you. Um, while we're talking about stuff like that, you know, if, if you're a beginning carver, don't give up. I mean, this is my first human carving that I did. And, you know, not, not really very good, but <laughs> I did it in 1984. And that was, that's my first, my first human figure that I did. All right. So now, have I got things in the right spot here? That looks good right there, Bruce. Okay. All right. Well, for my paint, first, like I say, first thing I do is just, you know, spray him, get him wet. I'm going to do his face first. So I just give it a good spray of water. And uh, for my flesh color, I use yellow, yellow oxide or yellow, yeah, yellow ochre. And just a little. And then also red iron oxide. And that I just use a very little bit. Mix those together and keep dragging some yellow in there until you get kind of the shade that you like. And then I water it down. And then paint. And if you go around the edges, like where the where the flesh is going to be, I I went around this one with a wood burner, uh, set real low so you're not really burning it too much. But it makes enough of a line there so that when you're painting quick like this, the paint doesn't run through uh, into the eyebrows or into the beard. You know, it just makes a nice stop, kind of like a stop cut. You can also do it just with a real sharp blade. Just go ahead and, am I getting out of the screen there? Um, just take a knife and cut along there real close and then that'll, that'll uh, basically do the same thing. Oh, I see one thing I forgot to do here. And this is something that Carvers should always do, I think, you know, you, you do a carving, sometimes you'll forget when you did it, for one thing, so it's good to put a date on it. And then, uh, you know, it might disappear sometime and somebody might find it, you always want people to know that you were the one that carved it. So this is, I just got a writing tip on a wood burner. And always sign your project. And that is something Harley Schmidtkin told me to do, even though I don't really have a copyright. 
<laughs> put a little copyright sign on there. And then put the year. All right, now we can continue the painting. So that's basically it for the flesh. And while that, I always go along and I, and I do the eyes right away, just with the, uh, with the white color paint. And for the eyes, I just put a little glob in the middle. And then just with water, I go in there and, and kind of spread it out with the water. Okay, and then while that starts to dry, I give him another another squirt on his beard. We'll take some white and just start rubbing that on there, and it it'll run it'll run all the way in, and it'll should stop down toward the bottom here where I got a stop cut. So just a little paint, you can pretty much paint the whole beard, and, and it's. Like I say, it's very, very thin. If you like it a little thicker than that, you know, after you get one coat on there, you can go over it and another coat on and make it make it more white if you like. Uh, and a little bit on the eyebrows. And here again, I'm rushing this a little bit, so it's kind of looking a little bit sloppy, but um, that's that's the basic there. Uh, shoes, you can either do brown or black. Um, I'm going to do these black. And there again, give these a good spray. And then you'd be amazed at how little paint you use to paint these things. You know, a lot of times you struggle with putting um, your black paint or whatever and your, this just goes on so quick. You're using acrylic paint, right? Yes, I, I use all acrylic. Um, I've, I've never had a whole lot of good luck you know, using oil bases. I've tried some of that, but I haven't ever, I just, you know, this is so much easier for me. Yeah, thanks. And then I use the uh, red iron oxide then, very thin again. And I just, you know, kind of cover the cheeks and the nose like you would a Santa Claus, obviously. And a little bit underneath the eyebrow. And if you get it on there thicker than you like it, just get a wet brush and, and you can kind of go over it a little bit and it'll pick some of that paint up so it'll um, soften it a little bit. And then we decide what we want, what color we want for the hat would be next. How are we doing? I'm going to have this baby done in no time. Um, let's go with a green hat. And it doesn't take much when you do it this wet way. So just a little glob of paint on there. And get the hat wet. And there again, it goes on really, really fast.
Bruce, this is Jim yes. Feather. I'll tell you, I, for one, am enjoying watching you paint. You are much, <laughs> much faster than I am and just a, a, a hoot. Well, it's, it, I, I enjoy having a painted carving. You know, I, like I say, I carved with Marv for a lot of years. He wouldn't paint anything. You know, he liked he liked to just have it the wood, which which I admire too. But to me, for my stuff that I was doing, I thought it really brings it to life when you put a little paint on it. That was just a personal preference on on my behalf. And uh, I tell you, with it, like I say, with it wet like this, I mean, it really takes no time at all. All right, so there we got his hat done. And well, let's do, I can do a black coat and it doesn't really come out looking really black because it, with, with it being so thin, it almost looks brown. Well, there again, I spray him down. And get this black and then as I, as I can everybody see that as I brush along the bottom here it just kind of it kind of wicks up into those cuts You got black running all over the place here. There, so that's actually black, but it almost looks, you know, more more of a brown. And then the other thing that I like to do is like where where this guy is pulling his hat on, you know, it, I like to put a little bit of just little dark around the brim and it just makes that stand out a little better and kind of just just blend it in you don't have to be real real careful when you with the with the painting process this way and like i say this isn't going to be for everybody i mean it's it's kind of i kind of like it you know it it's quick and it and it uh satisfies me yes that's all you got to be able to do uh, put a few little black marks on here just make little highlights all right and now he's ready for eyes and this is this is where you can you can have fun with uh you know, making him look different directions. Um, sometimes I'll take a look at the, you know, what I what I got for a palette up in here, and or when I carved the eye in there, which way it looked like it might might look like he's facing. I think I'm going to have this guy staring off this direction. So then I just take some blue paint and put a dot with him looking off this way a little bit. And then I end up with all these paints. I don't want to knock them over and spill them all over the place. Put some lids back on here. <laughs> my wife will be out here trying to clean my shop. And oh, wait a minute. I shouldn't admit to that, that my wife cleans my shop. <laughs> She's a good woman. And then hey, if you're in a hurry, yeah, go ahead. There's a question in the chat about what size brush you use for the eyes. Oh boy, I don't know. Little. Uh, it looks like a one. Just to put the little dots, and that that's probably the smallest brush that I've got. And now it's going to get noisy. 
on an air dryer to speed up the process a little bit to put the black dot in the eye. When that kind of gets dull in there, then you know it's you know it's probably dry enough to go ahead and and put a black dot in there. There we go. So you still see a little bit of the blue around the outside. And then the last thing we do is when it really gets dry, then I put a little white dot in there, um, similar to this. Just a tiny little white dot makes it look like, looks like there's light hitting and reflecting onto the eye. And then on this one, I put little freckles on him and I just do that with a little Sharpie. Um, let's see if I can find one here. Now with just something like this, you can just put a few freckles across, across his nose. And on his cheeks. Gives him another little interesting look. Yeah, I got the, I got those dots on there a little bit thick, so I'm not going to try to put the put the uh, white dot on those until that dries a little bit more. But that's basically, you know, that's that's the process for, for uh, painting the carving. Um, like I say, you can, you can get a lot more detailed with things if you like. Um, I, I do them up simple and, and quick. And then when this dries, I'll dip it in a bucket of uh, a linseed oil. And with the linseed oil, I also add um, some turpentine. And, like it's about, you know, if you were going to put four cups of oil in there, I put one cup of turpentine. So it's uh, not a lot of it, but it's enough that makes that linseed oil dry out. Otherwise, the linseed will stay. I think it stays wet forever. <laughs> I don't, you know, and I also sometimes for finish, I'll use. Uh, um, oh, where is it? It's just a uh, like a minwax. Polyurethane, there it is. I'll just use this clear satin and just paint it on with that. This, this I like too. It doesn't dry quite as fast probably as the linseed oil. Um, but I like I like putting that on there too. And then sometimes I'll just use that dark. If you want to give it an antique -y look, then you can use that uh, dark paste wax. That's a min wax product also, and just put that on with a toothbrush and wipe it off. And that makes a pretty good a pretty good um, finish on there too, and makes it makes it last. So. That's basically the painting process of the thing. Um, I don't know, is there any, anybody got any questions on, on anything with the painting? Hey, Bruce? Yeah. On the painting, when you do the linseed oil or the uh, polyurethane or the minwax, do you just do one or the other? Like you do linseed oil, but you don't do the polyurethane or you just do the polyurethane by itself or how, what's the combination of those yeah for for me i just 
use one or the other. I don't, I never okay. use both. I, yeah. I think some people probably do, but I guess I've never tried it um, other than just doing um, just one or the other. If you, if for me, I'll sit out here and carve one of these things and paint it, dip it in the linseed oil, and then I can go in the house. And I yeah. just leave it set and dry and it'll, it'll, it'll soak it all in. But rarely do I ever give it a second coating even of linseed oil. So I just put, just put one on there. Yep. Good. Thanks. I started putting their hands down the sides. That's that. Those were the first ones that I did. Got a little bit lazier when I was doing them. And if you just put them, <laughs> put the hands in the pocket, that seems to carve up a little bit quicker, but you can do either. Hey, Bruce. Yes. What color um, Minwax do you like? Uh, this is what I it's just a paste wax and it's just called special dark. And I've probably had this can for 15 years and I've probably used about that much of it. You know, it, it goes a long ways and it stays, you know, it stays good. So um, that's, that's what I guess I've found. And I, I don't use that a lot. I used to use it more than I do now. Thank you, Bruce. You bet. Um, I guess what I can do with this, with this, unfortunately, my other phone isn't working with a darn, but, but I can take this thing. Oop. There's the camera on that side. I can take this thing over and show, show a few of my other carvings that I've got. Um, I'll just start okay there. These are the pumpkins that I do. Um, great way to learn and to practice with doing facial expressions. You just cut or cut out a bunch of little pumpkins and and sit carve them. They're they're they really a lot of fun. And the I do have rough outs that I've got of um, like there's, that's a Marv set Santa Claus. There's some bowlers that I did um, with Marv's help. Uh, here's my hippie cum that Bean's talking about. Um, the laying down guy in there, that's a held down low. So I swiped that from him. Hmm. And then this big guy that was that was just sitting this one decided to put a bongo in his lap. So that's I tried a different one there. Is this okay what I'm doing here, guys? Yeah, it looks good. Now, if Since anybody has any questions, if they want to go ahead and ask questions now while you're showing these, that'd be great. Sure. These are my number of fans here for my Wisconsin fans. So, Bruce, do you sell your sell? carvings? I sell some carvings. I don't. Uh, I don't do. You know, I don't have any place that I sell a lot of stuff. I do have a little store. I've got a coffee shop, and I sell some stuff up there. And I can't get that guy to show. Wrong. It seems as though your internet uh, access is a little worse there where you're at, Bruce. Okay. Anyway, these are just a bunch of the other little fans. Um, Mm 
Now, here's my little, I can't it's not a good place to show that either. Yeah, it's showing your band <laughs> so I got a little marching band guy and I, on the back side, I, you can stick your iPhone in there and play music through the cornet horn. Wow. Wow. There. <laughs> Bruce, I have a question. Okay. Uh, when, when you're painting the gnome, I, I know you did the background with white for the eyes, and then you put the blue for the pupil. You added the black before the white little highlight for the light. Uh, the black, where does it go? Well, uh, it would go right in, like you want it a little bit smaller than the blue dot that you put on there. Okay. Is it kind of like a highlight a little bit? Yeah, it just, this is, this is probably dry enough now that I can, that I can put that, except now that I got, I got my camera in the wrong spot now, but yeah, for that little dot, I'll just use a toothpick. Let's see, camera's over here. I'll just use a toothpick. Can you, can you just put a little, a little dot on each side? Okay. And the black is also together with the red. I mean, I'm sorry, the blue, uh, the white goes first for the background, then the blue for the pupil and the black goes on the pupil itself too before the white. Yeah, it goes right over the blue. Okay. So you just leave a little bit of the blue showing on the outside. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, you bet. Fantastic face. Hey, Bruce, you might uh, mention the fact that on Instagram, you posted uh, steps for uh, carving this uh, this gnome, which was which was yeah. I I, I kind of had uh, a done one sitting there, and then as I carved, then I would take another picture and show what it looks like as you're progressing through um, through the carving. I never know which side the cam the camera is over here. Okay. That's where I should be looking over there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Any other questions for Bruce today? Hey, Bruce. Bruce. Yes. yes. Hey, uh, this is Roger Bean. And I just want to thank you for all the sharing of your uh, skills and all the good times we had carving together. It was, I really enjoyed it. Likewise, Roger. We Roger and I used to carve at Waldorf Wood Carving Weekend uh, down in Forest City, Iowa, and that was always a, a fun couple of days. All right, Bruce, uh, looks as though there's not any other questions, so we'll go ahead and uh, stop the presentation for now. I want to say thank you for uh, presenting today. I know it was a little bit frustrating with the internet uh, service, and that's always been the problem that we've had with these live meetings uh, is the fact that you never know what you're going to get. Um, so um, again, I think we were able to see everything that you were doing there, and we appreciate you taking your time to, uh, to share with us. Uh, it's a good learning experience, and uh, hopefully people will be able to benefit from the things that you showed today. So thank you again for that. I um, want to let everybody know that the bid on the knife uh, is now at $285. Uh, we're going to leave it open for a few more minutes while we do the, uh, the drawing for the one month subscription to Wood Carving Academy. Uh, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to Tom. He's going to spin the wheel and see what name we come up with. And uh, we'll give that away. Again, that's a one month subscription to Wood Carving Academy. I've got a subscription, or I'm sorry, I've got a certificate uh, that we'll send out to the person. Uh, that person will be able to contact your Ron uh, through Wood Carving Academy and set up uh, the membership there uh, and then have access from one month um, from that date. So uh, we'll get all that information out to you. Again, if somebody else wants to bid on the knife, make sure you go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll gather the information when I call it at the end uh, and receive payment. And again, that'll go towards our Zoom subscription. So. Uh, Tom, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. If you want to go ahead and do the drawing, we'll do that. And um, then we'll talk about what's coming up next. 
All right, thanks Blake and thanks Bruce. Uh, I'd also like to thank Yaron for uh, donating this one month. Um, here we go, just one second, get this out of the way. We're gonna spin. Number 96 is Mark Cable. Congratulations, Mark. We will be in touch. Back to you, Blake. All right. So, uh, Mark, will you have your email address if you're on with us today? If not, uh, we'll email you uh, the certificate out. Again, we thank Woodcarbon Academy for, uh, for donating that and for supporting us through uh, this. If you all are interested in classes, make sure you go out and check out Wood Carbon Academy. A lot of good things coming up. Again, um, uh, check out the classes from Kevin Applegate, Bob Hershey, Janet Cordell, Ryan Olson, and Del Green. Uh, they all have wor workshops that's coming up in May and June, so make sure you participate in those. Uh, reach out to those carvers so that you can get signed up for their classes. Again, they're all great classes. I participated in quite a few. I'm involved in Dave Stetson's class now, uh, and you're able to get more uh, instruction and detail in these classes because you get all the time uh, with the instructor, not just a little bit of time. So make sure you participate in those. Um, next week, we have Mr. Jeff May that's going to be on with us doing a uh, chainsaw carving demonstration. Uh, Jeff's on with us today and uh, we look forward to hearing from him. Again, Charles Banks coming up on May the 8th. Tom made us on May the 15th. And uh, we'll be working hard to try to line up future presenters and we'll keep you all posted as far as who we have coming up. Uh, again, Bruce, thank you for all that you do for wood carving. Thanks for sharing with us today. And we'll see you all next uh, Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the International Association of Wood Carvers. Thank you all.